Hey, hey, what is going on YouTube? So I am back with another mix breakdown. This time I'm breaking down my song Sting, which I just did a production breakdown of. So if you want to go like look into like how I made the sounds and how I wrote the vocal parts and all that, you can go watch that. But here I'm going to be talking strictly about all the mix decisions as far as like, you know, the vocal chain, how I mixed like, you know, the beat or I guess like not the beat, but like, you know, the instruments, the kick drum, the guitars, all that stuff. So yeah, anyway, let's get into it. So I'm going to go ahead and play the first like minute and a half of the song. That way you guys can kind of get like a vibe for, yeah, how the final product sounds. I waited till the window closed to drop a battle flag. A plan to rock a ballad, had a clearance, picked a tag. Another out of sign, I tell the hundred with a hit. Ran cables through the ceiling, flipped the switch and made a big door. Cool. So that should, you know, give you an idea of like how the song goes, what it sounds like in the final, you know, as a, as a final product. So what I'll focus on first is the vocals. So here I have, you know, several different vocals happening in this section here. Um, I'll just solo basically like all the, you know, what would be way easier if I just soloed this all vocal bus. Yeah. So check it out. Here's how the vocals sound in this one section. Tears on the maps to a vision. 30,000 on the back of indecision. Broken in the driveway with the keys in the ignition. Dying for the switch and made a big don't look just dig. Years in the trash to a So first thing that's really important. Yeah, the first thing that's really important that I have to talk about is the panning. So obviously like there's a lot of vocal layers happening. There's two highs. And then there's two kind of like lows panned hard left and hard right. And then the highs are panned a little bit. So I actually double the highs and have them panned so that, you know, they're a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Yeah, so verse high left. It's like 30% to the left and then 30% to the right. And then that's kind of how I get, you know, them to sit well together as like, you know, doubled vocals. And then I have my, you know, um, let me just play it so you guys can see it. This is hard left. This is hard right. And the harmonies are also panned. But I I never pan my harmonies. I usually, I want to say, I don't want to say never, but I usually never pan my harmonies further than 50% to the left or 50% to the right. And the reason for that is because I usually want my harmonies to harmonize and to like actually create textures underneath my mains and the further away that the main is in the center the further away it is in the stereo image from the main the less it harmonizes in my experience at least so that's why i have the harmonies definitely not in the center but usually a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right you can see the furthest i panned one of these harmonies was 50 percent to the left broken in the driveway with the keys in the ignition yeah and then the ad libs are a different story. Like the ad libs, I pan hard left and hard right because just get them out of the way of the mains. You know what I mean? Anyway, so the panning is crucial. Um, same with the hook. Like if you look at the hook, it's all about, you know, having them, you know what I mean? Like main in the center, hard left, hard right. Falsettos in the center. Okay, so falsettos, octave ups and octave downs. That's the only time I'll put something in the center because that's what I found works for that stuff. Um, anything other then an octave up or an octave down, a double, got to pan that somewhere. Um, you know, a harmony, got to pan that somewhere else. So like you see harmony one, two, this is pan hard right, 50%, 50%, ad libs are hard left and hard right. So panning, you know, you can layer your vocals as much as you want, but panning them is crucial. So um, yeah, that's all, that's all I'll say about that. So next, let's talk about the vocal chain. So the vocal chain for this is actually the same exact vocal chain as the Keep Your Time one, but let me just kind of like do what I did on the last one and just break it down kind of like piece by piece. So what I have is I have a few different vocal buses here. The first one being like, you know, the main vocals. So let me actually just, just focus on the main vocals for a second here. Dig. Dig. Keys in the trash to a dick 
So I'm actually taking all the plugins off because I, I feel like that that'll be that'll be fair. Um, that's just a filter in certain parts, I guess. Um, so here's here's the vocal without anything. First thing I do, add a de-esser. You can see it's taming the s's as well as some of the consonants. After that, I got an EQ, cutting out all the unnecessary. I always cut out everything underneath, like 100 hertz, to be honest, and then cutting down some of this mid range a little bit. After that, I got my LA 2A. You know, it's definitely adding some more volume to it, but it's you can see it's doing like five or so decibels of gain reduction. So then I have Soothe, kind of just like my vocal is so ridiculously bitey. So that's why I kind of like. You know, you can see it's just really soothing that vocal and making it way less like obnoxious. So that's what that's doing. And then I, I I do go into this a little bit more in depth on the Keep Your Time video, so you could watch that as well. Um, just because the, this vocal isn't quite as intense as the Keep Your Time vocal. So um, if you want to get like another you know more clear picture of my vocal chain, you could check that out. But um, then I have here my FG Red, just kind of tucks the vocal in a little bit more. Another 5 dB of gain reduction. With the keys in the ignition. Dig. Keys in the trash. Then I have C4, tucking in some of that, like, mid, or not, it, it, like, it's evening out some of that mid range and some of the low. Trash to I found that when you add compression, the compression actually brings the mid range up. And if that mid range is uneven, then it's going to sound, um, you know, it's going to sound like the mid range is kind of poking out in certain areas. So I use C4 for that. Um, yeah, and then after that, I have my Pultec adding a little bit at 8K. Here's without it. Yeah, that definitely adds some shine to it. And after that, I have the same thing happening for my harmonies. Literally the same thing. Only difference is I'm kind of like cutting out some of the, you know, some some of that like I guess 350, some of that mid range from the you know, from the, from the harmonies, because I don't really need it, to be honest. And then, uh, yeah, and then after that, I have, this is just, like, to warm up the vocal a little bit. Here's without it. Here's with it. Just kind of adds a little more color to it. I love this, the virtual tape machine. Um, yeah, just add some color, just add some warmth. And then after that, I have this EQ here. Um, so interesting thing that I did here with this EQ is that I cut out the lows, right? But I also cut out a lot of the mid-range from the side channels. And I have a lot of vocals that are panned hard left and hard right. So instead of having like an EQ on like, you know, the, the backup, I mean, I easily could have put an EQ on the backups, but mainly here what I'm doing is I'm cutting out the low end just from the side channel on all the vocals in general. That way, like it's just, it's taking all this vocal information and whatever's in the sides, cutting out the mid range from the sides. That way the mid range is sort of more centered. So here's without it. And here's with it. You can see how like the vocals to the sides are still there, but the mid range is kind of taken out from the sides. And the reason why this is okay is because there is guitars in the sides that are kind of filling in that mid range a little bit more. So those vocals that are on the sides are more like textures and less so carrying the mid range. So then I have this other EQ that's actually just juicing up the mid range a little bit because, you know, this EQ is actually great for adding both air and mid range. So the keys in the ignition, dig. Gears in the trash to addiction. Tears on the maps to a vision. 30,000 on the back of indecision. Broken in the driveway with the keys. It's a little bit subtle, but it's basically just adding more, you know, warmth to the mid range and, you know, more air. So let me just crank the air so you can. The keys in the ignition, dig. Gears in the trash to addiction. You know what I mean? Tears on the maps to a vision. 30,000 on the back of indecision. Broken. Yeah, and then after that, I have OTT. So first off, like I have a lot of this stuff going to like a reverb and a delay. So one thing, you know, that's worth noting is that this these are the exact same settings as, you know, the vocal in my Keep Your Time video. So like, I'm not going to go too in depth here, you know, just for the sake of time. Like, 
all it is is just a plate reverb on the vocal and then i'm side chaining the vocal i'm side chaining the vocal to an eq on the reverb and that's how i kind of like get the boat the reverb to duck down and you know clutter the vocal a little bit less you know because if I don't do that, then the reverb is all out of whack. Like, here's without the EQ on that. It's a little cluttered sounding, so... And then I believe I also sidechained the vocal. Oh, no. I sidechained the kick to the vocal reverb. That's what I did. I'm pretty sure that's what I did. Let me look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I sidechained the kick to the vocal reverb. I sidechained the kick to a lot of things, like including the vocal reverb, because that kind of makes space for the kick. And, you know, there's so much reverb in this song, so I kind of just have to do things like that to let it, you know, to, to make sure that the reverb doesn't clutter everything completely. Yeah. And then for the delay, um, you know, I DS the reverbs and the delays because... You know, you end up with problems if you have too many S's happening um, in your reverbs and delays because then it kind of just echoes and it's not good. So after that, I have, you know, just a typical, you can kind of go side to side, like it's a ping pong delay on an eighth note. And then, when you know, what I do is I side chain the vocal to a compressor on the delay with a kind of, you know, slow release time. That way it comes up in between the spaces of the vocal. You see what I mean? Like, it kind of like floats up after the vocal is done and kind of like creates that space, gives the vocal a little bit of space and, you know, doesn't come up so that it's so jarring, you know what I mean? But, you know, it kind of just like comes up and fills in that space with delay while the vocal is not there. Um, and then, yeah, after that, I, I have a few different effects that I picked up from the Make Pop music video on mixing pop vocals that I'm not going to go into because you could just go watch that video. Here is OTT on the vocal bus because OTT really kind of just adds a little bit more glue to I'm sending the effects and all the vocals to OTT and this is just adding so much more glue to it. Here's without it. Here's with it. Kind of, it compresses the low end, but it also brings the highs out, and it does it in, in a way that really works with my voice in a lot of cases. So that's why I have OTT on my main vocal bus. Let me see if I could just solo this. So here's here's without it. And here's with it. Just glues it together, man. Just like OTT on your vocal on your vocal buses, like you should try it because it really just glues the effect. It glues the effects and it glues, you know, multiple vocals. If you have harmonies, lows, whatever, it just glues all that together. Um, but you don't have to go crazy. You just like 10% usually <laughs> or less is fine. Yeah. And then what even is this? I'm compressing the top end, I believe, because I think the consonants were a little bit crazy. Yeah. I'm compressing these. Yeah. This is something I don't normally do, but I'm multiband compressing the top end here so that it's like nice and plays, you know, doesn't attack your ears necessarily. Yeah. And another thing that I have is I have an EQ on here that's uh well, this is a filter that only happens. I think that that's automated on and off in certain sections. But here I have my last line of defense EQ, literally the same thing as um, you know, keep your time. So let's check it out. That's like, you know, weird telephonic sound. That's weird telephonic, you know. That's just telephonic whiteiness. Two point like seven, two point nine k with my vocal is the fucking devil. I'll say it before, you know. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Yeah, that's that bite. It's bitey. It attacks you. Here's another one. It's like, you know, we're getting into like bitey, brittle territory. Then here's something just like weirdly ringy and bitey. So, and then this is just that brittle kind of like sharpness that I got out of it. So, you know, these, these frequencies were more noticeable 
on other sound systems. Like after I checked it, like in my car, for example, I was hearing all these like annoying frequencies. So here's without that EQ. And here's with it. Years in the trash to addiction. Tears on the maps to a vision. Thirty thousand on the back of indecision. Broken in the driveway with You hear how the vocal is nice and a little bit more even and those frequencies aren't quite attacking you as much. It's kinda hard to tell. Let me just do this one line. Dig. Here, wait. Okay, so here's without it. Dig. Years in the trash to addiction. Here's with it. Dig. Years in the trash to addiction. So the way that you kind of like find this stuff is you kind of just got to like search around like I could just pop another EQ on like if I wanted to, um, you know, try to find where there was a frequency that really sucks. Like what I would do is I would just kind of like tears on the maps to a vision. 30,000 on the back of indecision. Broken in the driveway with the keys in the you know what I mean? like. Dig. Years in the trash to addiction. Tears on the maps. You see how that sucks? So I would turn that down, right? I would, I would kind of, or you don't necessarily have to sweep through. Like a lot of times, like you just use your, use a little headphone thing. It's probably better actually. Yeah, so you can kind of hear, because anything's going to suck if you boost it that much. But like, you know, one thing that you could do is you can kind of just sweep through with the headphone icon. And then by the time you get to your, the end of your vocal chain, you're probably going to be using dynamic because it's not a problem the entire time. And then you kind of want these, you know, these lower ones to be a little bit more, these higher ones to be a little bit more narrow. And then, you know, you can kind of like, Tears on the maps to a vision. you know, on the back of yeah, a dynamic EQ at the end of your vocal chain is, is crucial, at, in my opinion. Everyone should, should do that because there's always frequencies at the end that you got to take care of. Yeah, and then that's, that's pretty much it for the vocal chain. The only other thing I'll say is like the ad libs have a little bit more distortion on them with the studer. And then I have an affected vocal towards the end of the song that has a little extra sauce on it. Um, yeah, like this vocal here. Oh, yeah. Na, 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 like the yeah, for, like specifically the yeah is like this crazy affected thing. Um, you just like try to just solo that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right here. Yeah. Basically just like, you know, is without anything. Yeah. Just the auto-tune. Yeah. And then DSer, Arvox. Yeah. I just like, all right, so, yeah. you know, I actually just like go, I'm kind of lazy when it comes to like ad-libs and shit because a lot of times I cut the lows out anyway. So like, it doesn't matter that I'm going to like crank it through Arvox. It's like usually Arvox makes my mid-range all wonky. So like I, I will try to avoid using it. But with ad-libs, it's great because <laughs> it just it, it just adds the compression that you want. And um, you know, I'm going to bring it down anyway with the C4. Yeah. And then I'll use Pro-Q. Yeah. Lower it completely, as you can see, because it's not it's yeah. not a main. You don't have to worry about that. And then this, yeah. this just adds like distortion to it. Yeah. This tape, you know, tape plugin. Yeah. from UA and then I have an API 55 yeah. uh, 550 yeah. I more like 10k to it you know what I mean yeah. so just a little bit of that yeah. and then I have a repeater on yeah. it this delay right here yeah. it's just a really crazy delay yeah. that just kind of adds delay before yeah. delay you know what I mean so I have this going to the delay yeah. but I have a delay on it as well so there's two delays on yeah. it And then here's the second delay. Yeah. So there's just like a stupid amount of delay on it. And you know, the studer, the, the tape plugin is what's giving it that distorted sound, but it's kind of lower in the mix. But when you hear it, you know, you recognize it. Oh. Na, 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 na. And it's nice and kind of like blended in. Anyway, yeah, so, so that's basically yeah, how I have this kind of, uh, you know, arranged as, or not, not arranged, this is how I kind of like have the vocals mixed for the most part. I think that a super important thing of how I got the chorus to sound the way that it sounds is with OTT and with that kind of like EQ plugin. So like, like the reason why that sounds like that is probably due to these 8k boosts on the Poltec. Like here, here's without them. Like it still sounds good, but when you boost 
by two decibels at like 8K. You know what I mean? And then OTT just kind of like brings that out even more. So like, here's without any of that shit. Ooh, and then here's with the Poltex. Okay, a little bit better. And then here's with OTT. Nice and airy, you know what I mean? Nice and airy, so that's kind of what I was going for there. So after that, the guitars. So the big thing, the main thing with the guitars actually is to just kind of like pan them hard left and hard right. That's the real secret in my opinion, is to pan your guitars hard left and hard right. And you know, other than that, let me see. So my guitar rhythm, literally just an SSL channel. Yeah, it looks like I'm kind of like boosting around like 6K. A lot of 6K boosting because of the fact that, you know, I really wanted like a like a brighter guitar sound, even though I was working with like a not right kind of guitar. So like, yeah. And then I, it looks like I boosted, what even is this? I boosted 4K as well. So here's without this channel strips EQ. And here's with it. It really just brightens it up. You know what I mean? So like this kind of like 7k range and also this like i guess like 5.5k range and then i also boosted it looks like 9k that's mad random why would i do such a thing no 900 yeah i guess that added a little bit more kind of like body to it overall so yeah so that brightened up that's literally all i use there i don't even think i use compression on this wow no i did i did not a whole lot though. Like barely any, actually. A little bit. Nothing crazy. And then I kind of boosted, what did I boost? I boosted this a little bit because I wanted the guitar to have a little bit more presence to it. So that's kind of, you know, why I boosted this. You know what I mean? That helps the guitar cut through. So that's kind of why I boosted that. Uh, what is that? Yeah, it's like 4.5k. 4.5k is an interesting one because that kind of helps, you know, that helps different things cut through in the mix is what I've discovered. Yeah, I have my guitar leads, literally the same thing, except it has an EQ instead, taking care of some of this like bitey stuff. Yeah, some of these annoying bitey frequencies, I'm just taking that down with an EQ. I'm not really warming up the leads because the leads aren't quite responsible for that warmth that you get from the mids. Yeah, that's why I do that. And then I have a delay on all my guitars. The delay is pretty hot, honestly, like as in like it's pretty loud in the mix, but that's kind of the whole vibe of the whole song. Like if you hear it without delay, it's like, it's like nothing. You know what I mean? It's like worthless with no delay. <laughs> so I have the delay on there and then I have this like kind of like R4 bandy guitar hall light that I fuck with heavy. So yeah, the, the, the guitar delay and the guitar reverb, that's huge. Like, especially with like emo rap, like emo trap type shit. Okay, so it looks like most of my processing is happening on the guitar bus with all the effects and stuff. So what I have here, it looks like, is just a ton of effects. Apparently, damn, okay. So first thing on the chain is, let me just loop up a section. And then first I got OTT. Just kind of evening out the mid range a little bit. Same thing I do with the vocals. The Neutron Compressor, which is doing nothing. Wait, oh, I'm side chaining. I'm side chaining the kick to the Neutron Compressor. That's what I'm doing. And then I have the Neutron EQ, which is just... Oh, I guess that was taking care of some unmasking. So like if I... What happens if I... I think the vocal is going to this. So let me actually unsell everything. Yeah. So I'm sending the vocal to an EQ that's unmasking these frequencies where the guitar is, you know, fighting with it. And the way that I do that is with Isotope Relay. Like I have Relay. I guess like stuck on the vocal or I have like a different neutron like on the vocal and I basically just um send it to this EQ and the EQ kind of tells me where things are conflicting just generally. Purpose, 
You know what I mean? So it's not actually doing anything when it doesn't hear the vocal, um, but it's sucking those frequencies down when it hears it. And then after that, I just took, this is just, you know, surgical stuff. Like I'm taking out some of this mid-range from the center channel, um, from the mid-channel, because I didn't actually want like, you know, this to conflict too much with the vocal. So hence like bringing some of this down. And then I guess I'm bringing it down in the sides, but a little bit more with a dynamic, I guess. So like as needed. And then some of these annoying frequencies, just like weird telephonic, weird telephonic, bitiness. It's weird. There's a fine line between like bitiness and like presence, it looks like. And then, oh, I'm bringing this out in the sides. So this adds a little more like, you know, almost like pick attack to the sides, it looks like. And then here, just like weird <laughs> weirdness. I don't really know how to describe that. But uh, yeah, so then I have an EQ. Um... Oh, interesting. Wait. So this one is the only one that's being sidechained from the vocal. Yeah. So the vocal is sidechaining to this middle band. So the vocal is causing this middle band to duck down that mid that you know that mid range of the guitars. And after that I have the Poltec, good old Poltec, you know, kind of adding a little bit more 200. That's that that guitar warmth. And then I have this EQ, probably doing the same thing. Yeah, adding even more warmth there because the guitars are like very mid rangey. Um, seems like I'm going around in circles, but sometimes like I said, I, I like to even things out and then I kind of bring it back, but it's a, it's a little bit more controlled when I bring it back. So after that, I have another EQ, and that's a filter actually. That that probably only that's probably automated on and off. And then so this bass sound that comes in. So here's here's the bass. It's like an electric bass. Yeah. So the way that I do that is I kind of just you know first thing I do. This is very important actually. This band and the EQ that's automated based on like where the kick, where the 808 is. So like, for example, there's no 808 in this section of the song. Let me just turn these back on real quick. There's no 808 in this first section of the song. So look at the automation and then look at the EQ and then watch what happens when the 808 comes in. Cause I, like, think about it. Like I'm, I have a bass guitar and an 808 happening at the same time. So this is how I kind of remedy that. You know what I mean? Like it's literally just like it, it kills the low end in the 808 in the bass because like obviously I'm going to give the low end to the 808 instead of the guitar instead of the bass. You know what I mean? Because you got to you got to manage your low end. That's what I'm saying. Like <laughs> you got to make sure that you don't have anything conflicting in the sub because that's going to be a problem. So first I have that EQ that's kind of taking out basically all of this because you don't need so the bass real quick. It's just like pick pick nonsense, you know what I'm saying? Don't need that. And then let me solve the part before that EQ. And then I got my VST bass amp doing whatever, just driving it, I guess. Um, I'm not gonna go into this too much because I actually don't, I haven't used it in a minute, so um, my explanation's gonna be bad. And then I, I think I'm side chaining the kick to it. It makes perfect sense that I'd sidechain the kick to this. Yeah. You know, same way I'd sidechain my kick to the 808, I sidechain the kick to that bass guitar. And um, yeah, that's the, all there really is to this bass sound is just kind of like, I wish I could explain this a little bit more, but you can see that I'm kind of like, you know, putting it through this Cubase bass amp and just getting a good tone out of it. Yeah, I mean, like I, I have this like Schecter, like it's like a replica. It's not, it's not a P bass, but it's like Schecter's version of a P bass. And that's kind of, how I, how I get that sound.
So I'm going to bring some of these other sounds back that I had muted previously because they were kind of annoying and making it so that you couldn't actually mute stuff or, or they made it so you couldn't actually like solo stuff um, without actually like having the sounds in there. So basically um, this this sound right here is the first of those sounds. And I didn't really do a whole lot to that. I basically just used Smack Attack to create a little bit more separation between those notes by bringing up the attack and bringing down the sustain. So as you can see, like all my annoying sounds that don't let you so <laughs> are coming back. So yeah, that's how I mixed that. And then after that, um, I literally did nothing to the doot doot because some sounds you literally just like mix in Serum using all this stuff. You know what I mean? And it already has the delay on it. It already has the reverb on it. You know, add reverb, add delay, and then, you know, add a little bit of distortion, add some compression, add some EQ in Serum. It looks like I'm just boosting the top end and adding some distortion to it in Serum. And uh, yeah, that's how I got that sound. Um, okay, so then these chord sounds, let me see. Uh, yeah, so some of these, you know, some of these other sounds, what I like to do is I like to kind of boost the sides in some of these chord sounds, like, um, you know, these like pads, I guess you could say. Yeah. Like, I cut the low end because a lot of these sounds, like, you won't know it until you listen to your kind of like low end and solo and then you hear all this like low end nonsense happening. So I kind of cut everything. A lot of these sounds, I cut everything below like 120 hertz because you don't really need that. Um, even though these sounds are meant to fill out the mid range, um, as you can see this one, I, I was a little bit more generous. I left some of that low end in with the low pads, um, but with the core pads, not so much. So yeah, and then so with the bass, all I did with this marshmallow bass is I just added smack attack on to just give it a little more like, you know, just like, wow, yeah, not that much. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit, just to kind of, like I said, add that little bit of note separation. And then, um, yeah, and then some of these sounds, a lot of these sounds I didn't really do a whole lot with. Um, yeah, I literally did nothing with, with a few of these. Um, I just added a low cut to the massive sounds. And then, you know, one thing that I do is I have my synth sidechain. So I have a few of these synths going to a sidechain bus. It's like an aux. And basically, I have uh, you know my kick routed to that aux. Yeah. So the kick, the kick is basically um you know these are these are kind of like my preferred side chain settings as I have the attack all the way down. The release kind of just comes makes it so that it's not so fast that it comes up and you know, you don't, it's not, you know, it doesn't come up before the kick is done, but it's not like so slow that like there's a pumping, there's like an audible pumping sound to it. So I usually do like, you know, zero to five decibels because I don't need to duck it down that much. You know what I mean? Or rarely do I have to do that, um, especially like kicks against the synths. Like that's not usually where the problem lies. Um, so yeah, and then I have all synths, which is, you know, I have my vocal side chain to this. Wait, that's mad random. Okay, just kidding. I have my snare side chain to track spacer. That's crazy. Yeah, I have my snare side chain to track spacer on the synths. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so disclaimer: I mixed this like months ago, like mad long ago. So I'm like discovering some of these things, some of these like you know Easter eggs. Okay, so my 808. I'm not gonna go over that because I already went over that in Watch Your Luck and Keep Your Time. But one thing worth noting is that I have bass rider kind of evening out these bass notes. So when you have different notes happening, like you have different 808 notes, like it's it's kind of hard to get these, you know, notes to hit at the same volume. So I use bass rider to kind of like, you know, even out the volumes and make make these notes kind of like hit loud enough, you know, be audible on the most amount of systems I want to say like because you'll notice like lower notes don't translate as well on like some systems especially ones that don't have like subs so that's kind of like here's like a remedy for that like that low note 
it like the bass rider like cranks it up for that low note to make sure that low note comes through. And then CLA 76 just tames that a little bit, but also brings the tail out. Yeah, and and you can see how the release time kind of brings the tails of those 808s up, and that's what I'm going for there. Um, and then I have my kick side chained to this neutron that's on the 808. And then I also have this, um, you know, I haven't gone into this in my other videos. I did go into it in my in my Keep Your Time video. But if you sidechain, not if you sidechain, but if you send your bass to a bass bus, <laughs> like another bus, and then you actually like, you know, so here's me sending it to this. I'm just going to turn this up so you guys can hear it. And then I add an EQ on, cut the lows out, right? And then add our bass on. So I have our bass on, kind of just adding a little bit more to that 127. You know what I mean? And then this is the thing, that Manny distortion. Oh, shit. That Manny distortion. I'm just driving the crap out of it. And then uh, let me let me actually mute all this other nonsense because this is the reason why I had the shit not playing. All right, so here's the 808 by itself up to this point. So you see like this Manny Distortion just added mad juice to it. And then here I have another EQ just taking care of some annoying resonances and cutting the low end even more. This EQ is just taking care of some annoying frequencies. And then I have C4 lowering that low end even more. And then I have, you know, my I'm compressing I'm side chaining the kick to this sound as well. So I'm gonna put my kick on. Uh, where's my kick? Yeah. So basically, you know, this is doing the same thing that it's doing to the bass, but the trick is, and I learned this from a Dave Von Terrell video, if you kind of just like, reverse the phase on one channel. So let me actually uh keep the time away two bus. Here here it is by itself. That's what happens when you reverse the phase on one side. When you distort it, high pass when you high pass it and distort it and reverse the phase on one side. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's like it's in the back of your head. But it's really just spread out. So when you add that on with the 808, it sounds ridiculous. Obviously, it's too loud. So I'm going to turn it back down to where it was. So here it is. Here's the 808 now without that sound. I mean, like, it's not bad. But listen to when I bring it back in. You hear how it has that little bit of top end. It's not just top end, it's like spread out top end. So yeah, that's a that's a huge trick. Um, yeah, anyway, now I have Soothe kind of sent to this. I have the I have the re uh the kick sent to Soothe as well. And then I actually have another sub, like I have a long sub towards the beginning of the song that's kind of like literally just a long sub and I have the double CLA 76s to just bring that tail up and make sure that tail is really heard. And then, you know, doing what I do, attenuating 60 hertz because the bass is gonna be there. And then I just kind of like crank some other frequencies with our bass just because I want it to be a little bit more full sounding. I, I add a little bit more like 120. Um, yeah, I added in a little bit of like 120 and a little bit of like 90. You know, that that upper bass, lower mid range, and that boominess. And then yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Um, so my kick drum, again, same kick drum as keep your time and watch your luck. So I'm not gonna go into it too much. Um, it's just like literally just smack attack. Yeah. So here's the plug-in chain. Ready? Cutting out everything below 
you know, I guess like 47 hertz because the, yeah, there's an 808 happening. And so I don't want the sub from the kick cluttering the 808. After that, I got smack attack, just adding a little bit more attack, taking it out and down the sustain of it, making it tighter. Then I have this compressor with a slower attack time that really just adds a little bit more like, you know, clickiness to it and just punch in general. Then I have a soft clipper that's just adding some harmonics. Um, and then I have, you know, this boost adding like more clickiness to it, as you can see. Then I have this compressor adding some more compression as well with a slow attack time because with any drum sound really the trick is slow attack times yeah and after that i have i guess i was just like annoyed by this one frequency oh that's like it sounds like that's the click so it sounds like i just wanted to take that down a little bit um yeah and then i have a lot of this stuff kind of side chain you can see like how many things i'm side chaining the kick to by just looking at it i'm side chaining it to the vocal reverb it looks like, yep, the bat, uh, the the bass, the 808 bus, the the wide 808 bus, all the reverbs, the synth side chain, and then I think something else on the 808 bus. Oh yeah, so the soothe on the 808 bus and the neutron compressor on the 808 bus. So yeah, I'm about <laughs> all about side chaining that kick. So um yeah, other than that, you know, I have my my other kick sound that's like distorted in the beginning of the song. Like these these sounds. That's literally just isotope trash and a filter. You know what I mean? So that's all that that is. And then I have my snare here, my regular snare that's happening throughout the song. Literally cutting the lows, you know, housekeeping, and then just kind of adding that 400. You know what I mean? The punch at 400 with the snares is crucial. And then just kind of tucking it in with a compressor. I feel like this compressor is slept on. It's so great. And then I have a plate reverb for my snare. Or actually, interesting. Nah, I sent it to the echo verb. That's cool. So I like this reverb, I guess. Normally I use plates on my snares, but apparently the echo verb was the move here. Um, yeah, reverb time of 1.8 is my is my favorite for sure because it's like any longer, it's like, well, hold on. I feel like 1.8 is usually like right on the money, so that's what I go for there. Um, cool. And then after that, what do I have after that? So my hats. So with the hats, I literally just kind of like EQ. Well, I have filters in certain sections of the song. And then first thing I do is I EQ out pretty much all the low end. So I have a couple of hats. I have like my main hi hat. You know, that's a little bit more, I guess of the body of the symbol. And then it has that top end to it already. And then I add the NLS channel to just give a little bit more like character, a little bit more color to it. So NLS channel on hi-hats is definitely the move in my experience. Then smack attack to just give it a little bit more attack, you know. And then yeah, so with the hi-hats pattern though, this shit, you know, the ones that are like panned from left to right, really what that is, is it's an isotope. I think it's the falling hail preset, but it's just like distortion. Essentially, it's just distortion. I just put distortion on the hi-hats and then I, you know, boosted the highs a little bit on them just to make them pop a little bit more. And then I also compress them just to make them a little bit more even because when you have mad hi-hat samples, you can compress them and just like, you know, with a slower attack time and it kind of brings them all forward, but also makes them more consistent in volume. So, um, and again, I use Smack Attack here as well to just like. Kind of makes them pop a little bit more. Yeah, and then my reverse symbol chain. Um, I, I've talked about this before for sure, but like what I do is it's a combination of Soothe and a compressor usually. Or if you don't have Soothe, then it's just an EQ taking down some of the harsher frequencies. But like, yeah, like. 
It's just a compressor that kind of like rides that symbol and just kind of makes sure that it's in check. And then. Literally just the math symbols preset, but I usually don't go too deep with it. Like if you go too deep with it, it's like. Actually, that didn't even sound that bad. Well, the mix is at like 23%. So if I put the mix up more. You know what I mean? It takes the life out of it. So like, hence why you don't, the, the mix function on the Soothe is actually like low key, so clutch. So that's why I like using that. After that, not a whole lot to go into because I used a lot of samples and a lot of these samples, all you really need is either to just do a little bit of EQ or a little bit of Soothe. And that's all basic. That's all basic stuff. Um, the submarine, I actually, it looks like I added some distortion to the submarine parts. Yeah just like Magneto, so like. So here's without that, and then. Little bit of, I guess, I think that might be saturation, actually. Yeah, saturation. Smack attack to give it a little bit more attack. Make it a little bit more defined, you know, then a delay. And then a little, and then like pretty much a lot of reverb. Yeah, I'll put a reverb directly on the sound here because I really just want to bury that sound in reverb and it's the quickest way to do it. And also these like kind of like once in a while sounds aren't that bad if you put reverb on them just to kind of like, you know, especially if the sound is so dependent on the reverb. So that's what I found. Okay, and then I have my all drums bus. I actually semi 808 to my drums bus, but so here's the drums. A little bit of smack attack. You know what I mean? I could fuck it up if I wanted to, but I'm not gonna do all that. <laughs> just a little bit, usually. And then a little bit of compression just to kind of even out the drums overall. Not a lot, you know what I mean? It's essentially bus compression. And then C4 to just bring that top end down a little bit. Not bring it down necessarily, but just tame it just slightly, you see. Yeah, I didn't really do too much to these other effects other than like EQing, you know, some, the more like samples you use, the more you realize that people actually mix these samples before uploading them to Splice because you don't actually have to do a whole lot. And especially if you're picking good samples, you won't have to do a lot. You know what I mean? Just compressing that top end a little bit. The only other thing is that, you know, these woos and these ha's and all this shit is just like a fuck ton of distortion and a fuck ton of reverb. That's mainly just like a bunch of distortions, basically. Like may mainly this one, mainly this distortion right here. Like here's without it. Yeah, and delay, you know what I mean? Just a ton of delay. And just, yeah, taking down some of the stuff, you know, this. It's kind of just a resonance in the song or in the, in the sample. And then I just delay the crap out of it. But it also has, you know, going into this reverb, drench verb. <laughs> so, oh, that's not doing anything. Yeah, I printed the reverb because my reverb was being weird. So like, I just printed it here. Yeah, and then, yeah, yeah the only other thing I'll say about this mix is that I, have you know typical to what i do is i have you know my kick side change to all the reverbs basically hold on at this point now i can bring back all those sounds that were annoying the crap out of me my reverb you know i have a few different reverbs in this song mainly the guitar reverb and you know whatever other reverb like you know, the vocal reverb, but yeah, I have a hall, some of this stuff. Um, this hall is like a classic sound. I have, um, you know, a neutron compressor on this, that kind of like, you know, on the, the reverb bus, that kind of just, you know, ducks the reverb down a little bit, just in those sections, um, where the kick hits. Yeah. It just ducks the reverb only when the kick hits. And then I have track spacer. Which is like, you know, the vocal is going to track spacer on the reverb and that's creating more space. Right 
So like, you know, this is a perfect place to kind of end because this gives you an idea. Like when you have as many kind of like elements in the arrangement, you have to do, you know, the most with like the side chain compression and the track spacer and ducking down the EQs and keeping the low end out of the sides. And if you've learned anything at all from this, I hope that it's like, you know, about, you know, kind of trying to like tame all the messy things happening in your mix kind of like as early as possible. So that later on, you don't have any like muddiness happening and it's just like clean and you're able to hear all the different elements as much as you can. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it with this with this mix. You know, it, it's a uh, it was, it was a fun one. It actually didn't even take me that long because this was like, you know, the fifth or so song I had mixed. So at this point I was like, I had a groove down. I had kind of like my presets and stuff. But yeah, anyway, I hope you got something out of this. Then I, I hope this was helpful. And, um, you know, as always, please, you know, check out the song. Let me know what you think. And let me know, you know, if this was helpful, what worked, what didn't work. I'm open to feedback. Um, otherwise, you know, like, comment, subscribe. And I appreciate you watching. I will see you on the next one.